Hello once again to all my favorite internet people. It is me, Brandon Hart, and uh, you know, <laughs> it's uh, it's been a year, hasn't it? And actually, it's been a year since we got this too. So let's do a big 120X review after a year. And uh, we're gonna start off, first of all, by just talking about the differences between the version two uh, that we did a review on, I, I guess, well, it's been about probably close to a year now. The Big 60 version two review after a year. Look at the corners of the video somewhere for a link to that. Because if you haven't seen that, you're probably gonna want to. We're gonna review this, this machine, the version three machine, and I'm gonna reference the version two video, the review that I did quite a bit. So it's probably worth your time to go check that out if you haven't already. But uh, with that said, we're gonna jump straight into talking about what is different about the Modix version three machines from the Modix version two machines. The Modix version three, is it different from version two in anything other than just the number? Uh, yes, spoiler, yes, it is. But before I jump into that, I do have to do the disclaimer thing real quick. So uh, so here we go, strap in. Uh, Hardsmart Products is a reseller of Modix 3D printers. So um, we have sold quite a few of these to quite a few customers all around the United States. Uh, I've gotten lots of feedback, lots of input from them. So some of that will play into kind of my thoughts about the machines and, and how they're being used. Um, but uh, I just felt like I needed to throw out that disclaimer. This is a review video. It will be very open, very transparent, um, very honest. I am not compensated in any way for making a review video. Um, all my thoughts expressed, uh, all my opinions are my own. Keep that in mind as we walk through a lot of the differences between version two and version three. There is a reason why we resell Modix machines, so keep that in mind. What is different about the version three from the version two? Well, there's quite a bit. In fact, I made myself a little list here. The version three, first of all, has a major upgrade to its brain. Um, so if you remember from the other video, the control board for the version two was never really my favorite. It also never really gave me any real issues. So I had a hard time complaining about it, but I wasn't a big fan. Uh, on the version three, we've gone to a full on genuine duet to Wi-Fi control board. So not only is it a 32 bit board with TMC stepper drivers, um, but it's also got built in Wi-Fi capability. Uh, it comes with this nice seven inch touchscreen display, which again, kind of thought the version twos should have had, but uh, now that we've got a duet control board, we can do the uh, panel do, do, I think is what it's called, 7i, so a seven inch touchscreen here. So a really, really nice display, easy to interact with. And of course you've got duet web control over the local network connection or over VPN. If you VPN into your local connection, you can, remotely control, upload, do all the things with uh, with that. Okay, so what else is different on the version three from the version two? Um, there are a few things, but um, one of the things that I really like a lot about the way that the print head has been redesigned is it's no longer that wiggly wobbly thing with the drag chain that kind of comes down underneath. Now the drag chain comes up over the top the way it should. There's a much larger aluminum metal um, plate here that is far more rigid. And uh, this whole thing just seems a little bit better designed than the version that came before it. In fact, in addition to that, we now have Titan Aero print heads. Um, and uh, the, the version two machine had Titan extruders coupled with the full length volcano hot ends. In this case, we've got direct dual Titan Aero uh, extruder. So the heat sink is actually built into the extruder cover itself, which means that the distance between the extruder teeth, where it's actually gripping and pushing the filament, and the nozzle is very, very short. 
Um, so you've got better precision, better control over the extrusion of the material through the hot end. And I really, really like that. Now, that being said, while this is a better uh, dual extruder setup, it is still challenging. <laughs> uh, it is still challenging to print with two different materials. Um, so most often you're going to be printing with a primary material, PLA, PETG, ABS, polycarbonate, whatever. Uh, and then the secondary will be a support material of some sort. Uh, some sort of uh, soluble support or breakaway support. Maybe it's just a secondary plastic or a different color, whatever the case may be. Having those dual uh, hot ends right next to each other and at the same height does make things challenging. You definitely need to take the time, be patient and dial it in. But with this new setup on the version three design, you can get there and it does give you good results. Um, so that is a nice improvement of the version three over the version two setup that came before it. And you can see I'm actually running dual extruder on this particular machine, whereas I did not recommend doing so on a version two. The other thing that, that uh, was pointed out on the version two and probably the thing I got the most comments about in those videos is the way in which the bed was supported. There were three ball screws on the version two. So two on the right hand side, one on the left. And people did not like that. I found it to be okay. I definitely preferred having ball screws in every one of the corners. That's what you get with a version three. No matter which one we're talking about, the big 60, the big 40, the 120X, the big meter, the 180X, the 120Z, uh, all of them now have ball screws in every corner of the bed. The other thing you can do with that is you can also have uh, the Duex 5 expansion board in the controller, and you can even drive each one of those ball screws, ball screws independently from the control board. So if you go to probe the bed and you find that, oh, I don't know, this back corner is a little high, the system can automatically lower that back corner to bring it in, in, in line, make it flat, make it level. Um, and then, uh, you know, you can maybe run the probe again just to make sure everything is still good, but it can automatically adjust that bed. Now, again, that's not built in with the stock version of the 120X version three, um, nor is it on the big 60, but some of the bigger machines do have that capability built into it. We modified our 120X to add the DUX5 board so that we do get that functionality in this machine. And uh, it is cool. It is very cool. Uh, the machine automatically levels itself. So I love that. All right, what else? Um, oh, the enclosure. So the Big 60 V2 had a, an all acrylic enclosure. So it was really nice because a lot of light could come into that machine and you didn't really need to add lighting, although we did anyway. Um, but with the version three machines, we are now given these ACP panels. Um, so the whole machine, as you can see, it's black paneling all the way around. And this black paneling is ACP. I think that's like aluminum clad plastic or something like that. Basically it's aluminum sheets on the inner and the outer with a plastic core in the middle. Modic sells the Big 60 and the 120X with the enclosures as optional. I will tell you they are not optional. <laughs> uh, you really, really have to have the enclosure. Uh, I, I just can't imagine using this machine without the paneling not even just for heat retention, which it does a very, very good job of. This ACP is a very good insulator, um, but mostly just because of the rigidity that it adds to the system. Like, you gotta have the enclosure. Oh, they also uh, upgraded the linear rails. So we've always had high wind linear rails for X and Y, um, but the new design, the version three machines now have the much beefier linear rails, the, the high wind linear rails. I forget what the version number is, but we'll probably put it down 
in the lower third here. Um, but these things are much bigger and therefore are much more solid. So there's less ability to kind of wiggle things around. Um, everything is tied in a lot nicer. Um, in fact, not only do you have the nicer, bigger, beefier, uh, high wind linear rails for X and Y, you now also have the option to go in Z. So, and I don't know if you can see this, but here in the back corner, we've got the Z axis linear rails. And the Z axis linear rails essentially are tying the entire bed structure to the frame. So these 4040 extrusions that make up the four corners of the frame have the linear rails tied directly into them. And those are then connected to the bed corners, just like here. And uh, basically what you're doing is you're making it so that the bed is fully constrained. There is no opportunity, there's no possibility of this bed moving in X or in Y. Uh, this bed is tied to the frame. And uh, obviously, you know, when coupled with these nice ACP panels um, and the, the linear rails for X and Y, you're talking about something that is pretty well um, precise, pretty, pretty constrained as far as uh, any unnecessary or unwanted movement. Uh, the Z-axis linear rails are an optional upgrade, so they don't come with the stock base unit, but uh, we did it for ours and I, I wouldn't go back. I'm very, very happy to have those on there. I've wrestled with Z-Wobble on a lot of the other machines that are driven by lead screws and stuff like that. Uh, even some of the machines that have ball screws in them. And I love having those, uh, those Z-axis linear rails. They're not cheap, but they are worth the upgrade. All right, so with that being said, uh, the print head also has built-in compatibility with the different E3D hot ends. So on the version two machine, I had to sort of modify our machine to make it work with Super Volcano. On the version three machines, it's ready to go. Comes with a Volcano hot end out of the box, but you have the ability to swap it out with an E3D V6. We can talk about whether that's a, something that makes sense to do, but you can. Um, you can also swap it out with a Super Volcano and you don't have to modify your machine at all. You simply put the Super Volcano in, in place of the Volcano and adjust the part cooling fan and the BL Touch level sensor so that they're at the appropriate height for the new hot end and start printing. Awesome. <clears throat> um, there's also lighting, but it, again, that's because the ACP panels kind of get in, you know, they block out the light, so you have to have lighting. Um, there's an active air filter option, which is a really nice system. Uh, it's, I believe it's originally made by Bofa, and they make some really, really good three-stage filtering. Um, and the cool thing about that is it keeps the heat in the system. You're not venting to the outdoors and then replacing it with cold air. The heat uh, is removed from the top, goes through the filter, comes back in the bottom, and it stays in the system. So that's cool. That's, again, an option, optional add-on. Another optional add-on are the industrial casters on these machines, which are much nicer than the ones that I put on my Big 60 V2 as an aftermarket upgrade. Uh, these are really, really cool. So that's a nice option for only hundred bucks. It's not bad. And then the other thing <laughs> that I guess I have to point out, it is definitely improved, which is the assembly instructions, the build instructions. Um, they spent, clearly a lot more time trying to put together good, clear instructions for the version three machines than what the version two instructions look like. There's still room for improvement and they have a feedback section at the bottom of every single step, every single page, so you can help them make it better. Um, and, and I have definitely seen since we put together our very first batch machine, to the machines that we are currently assembling for customers right now. The instructions have improved quite a bit, but there's definitely still room for improvement. Um, but again, versus the version two, it is quite a bit better. Little video clips showing you how to do things, better explanations, better pictures. When you click on a picture, you can blow it up and actually see it a little bit better. 
none of that was available with the version two. So uh, definitely, definitely like the version three instructions better. But with all of that being said, what is the biggest difference from, from version three to version two? Um, <clears throat> what we're really after here is print quality, right? Well, as you might be able to tell, print quality is actually quite nice. Um, so these were all printed on the 120X version three, a uh, little stringy, um, but that is uh, due to the fact that these were printed in some recycled PETG. So this is Reflow recycled PETG. Uh, some beautiful color. Love this stuff. It's amazing. It's like see through a little bit. Um, but look at those layers. I mean, those are those are beautiful. So uh, we'll talk more about print quality when we get to the review section. But one of the things that I have to point out as a difference between the version three and the version two is I've been very happy with the print quality coming off my version two. Print quality is better here. Um, we'll talk about what it takes to get to that, but it is better. Okay, I think that is enough of me rambling on about the differences between the version three uh, as compared to the version two that came before it. So I'm gonna cut this off and we'll do more sections, uh, more parts of this uh, big 120X review after a year soon. But for now, uh, thanks everybody for watching. Please do make sure that you subscribe, uh, click the little bell to be notified when new videos are released. And uh, if you have questions, leave them in the comments or shoot them to ecostruder at heartsmartproducts.com. And until next time, print big and have fun doing it.